and the videos keep on coming. Shalom to the elect of the nation of Israel. All praises and glories due to Yahweh Barshem Yahushai, Barshem Rakar Kadash, for giving us this knowledge, this truth. And we are going to continue with the 10 part video series 10 things the wacky tacky Christian does not understand about the Heavenly Father. So far, we're up to part number seven, which says you cannot serve him unless he chooses you to serve him. Yeah, especially the wacky tacky Christian. They believe that they can just, whatever day they feel like it, they can just open up their heart and let Jesus come into their heart. And they're born again, they're sanctified, and they're saved. Which is the biggest crock of BS you ever heard, man. These people are totally deluded because the scriptures do not teach that. Okay, the Heavenly Father chooses you. You don't choose Him. Okay, and if you know the scriptures, the ones that were chosen, as in, i.e., the elect, that's right, the elect. The elect are the only ones that are chosen. The elect of the nation of Israel. <laughs> that's what the wacky tacky Christian don't understand. They were chosen even before the earth was created. And there's a few titles for the Israelites that have been chosen. They're also known as the Church of the Firstborn. Does the elect know? Not the elect, but does the uh, wacky tacky Christian know anything about that? Oh, hell no. They don't know anything about the Church of the Firstborn. They could, if you were to ask them to break it down, they wouldn't, they wouldn't know where to begin. This is why the Bible says in Isaiah 60 and 1, gross darkness to people. This is why it also says, Jeremiah 4 and 22, my people are foolish, they have not known me. Okay, so we're going to explore that in this video. I'm just going to bring out a couple of scriptures. The first one I'm going to go to, of course, you already know, is John. As a matter of fact, let's do the, uh, the old uh, split screen. Let's do that. John, let's go to the book of John, the 15th chapter. The 16th verse, which goes right to the point. <clears throat> As a matter of fact, these are the words of Yahweh Shai. And this is what he said to his disciples. By the way, did his disciples choose him or did he choose his disciples? Someone should ask, ask the wacky tacky Christian that question. If it's so easy for you to open up your heart and let Jesus come into your heart and then you're saved and you're sanctified and you're born again and uh, everything is beautiful <laughs> the birds are chirping you know I'm going to have fun with this man because the wacky tacky Christian they're a cartoon man that's what they are they're a cartoon okay with their crazy beliefs which is not based upon sound doctrine the Bible speaks about sound doctrine Anyway, John 15, yeah, so like I said, uh, someone should ask the wacky tacky Christian, did the Lord choose his disciples or did his disciples choose him? Which one is it? As far as we know, those of us that know the scriptures, we know the Lord was the one going around doing the choosing. You know, he would say to certain individuals and that's because he knew who they were in the past and the wacky tacky Christian don't understand that. He would say to certain individuals, come and follow me, like what he said to Peter and Andrew. Okay, come and follow me. Because he knew who Peter and Andrew were in their past life. All right, and he, and uh, like he said, like Yahweh Shai said, when he prayed to his father in John 17. As a matter of fact, let's get that real quick. It was already in John, right? Now, check this out, what Yahweh Shai said to his father. Okay, um... It is right here, which shows you that you are not the one that chooses the Heavenly Father. The Heavenly Father is the one that chooses you. And he already made his choice of who he wants to be to serve him, as in, i.e., the elect. He already made that choice even before the earth was created. And the wacky tacky Christian has no idea about that. John 17 and 6. These are the words of Yahweh Shai. He was praying to his father, Yahweh. He said, I have manifested thy name unto the men as in the uh, disciples which became apostles, 
the, the, the very core of the elect, the beginning of the elect, I have manifested thy name unto the men which thou gavest me out of the world. So no, you don't choose the Heavenly Father. The Heavenly Father is the one that does the choosing, not you. Which thou gavest me out of the world. Thine they were, and thou gavest them me, and they have kept thy word. Right, and the elect have to go through Yahushai, because Yahushai, like he said, he is the doorway to the Father. That's what he said. I am the door to the Father. And the members of the hopeful elect, we totally understand that. We totally get it. And Yahushai more than deserves that, that position because of all what he's done for us and our nation. All right, and sacrificing himself on the cross. Okay? So you can't get around the scripture here. I have manifested thy name unto the men which thou gavest me out of the world. Thine they were, and thou gavest them me. And they have kept thy word. So the heavenly father is the one doing the chosen. Or doing the choosing. And, and he's already chose who he wants. To serve him. 100%. To serve him. And all the members of the elect have to go through the head of the elect. Which is Yahweh Shai. Um, let me keep reading. It says, Now they have known that all things whatsoever thou hast given me of thee. For I have given unto them the words which thou gavest me. Right? And we believe by faith we're of that ilk. Alright? Uh, and they have received them. Yeah, because they were chosen to receive them. They were chosen by the Heavenly Father to receive them. Receive what? The understanding of this Bible. That's the words he's talking about. And they have received them and have known surely that I come from thee. And they have believed that thou didst sent me. Absolutely. I pray for them. I pray not for the world. So the world is talking about here is the world of Israel. So even the nation of Israel, not every Israelite is chosen by the Heavenly Father right now. The only ones that are chosen by the Heavenly Father to believe in him and to, uh, like how I coined the phrase, the true worshipers. The Father seeketh such to worship him. The only ones that have the, uh, the pleasure of having that um, position is the elect of the nation of Israel. The rest, like it says in Romans 11 and 7, the rest were blinded by the Heavenly Father. Because simply the Heavenly Father don't want them. They're not part of the elect. The, the ones that the Heavenly Father is looking for right now are the true worshippers also known as the elect of the nation of Israel because they're going to rebuild the kingdom of Israel beginning with Yahweh Shai he's the head of the elect and Yahweh Shai already finished his course he sits at the right hand side of the father even as I speak so now the rest of the elect have to be accounted for which makes up the house of David and when you read the prophecies the house that's going to be saved is the house of David not the house of Saul the house of David. There were two houses in the in the nation of Israel. You had the house of Saul and you had the house of David. The scriptures say the house of Saul waxed weaker, but the house of David waxed stronger. Now, according to the book of Amos, the ninth chapter, the 11th verse, that's the house the Lord is going to raise up in these last days. The house of David, the tabernacle of David. So all the spirits that are present and accounted for, for the tabernacle of David, they're going to receive this knowledge, they're going to receive this truth, and ultimately they're going to be saved. And the Heavenly Father already made that choice long before the earth was created. All who are the members of the house of David. As a matter of fact, to show you that I'm not blowing smoke, this is actually biblical. If we go into prophecy, and the wacky-tacky Christian has no idea about prophecy. You can... You, <laughs> You ask them about prophecy, they, they wouldn't know where to begin. They're just totally lost. All they know is Jesus wept. And Jesus, <laughs> they know that scripture. Jesus wept. And all he does is love. He doesn't have a mean bone in his body. He looks like a so-called white man, a, a drugged out hippie. That's all they know, man. Okay? We're talking about the wacky tacky Christian. Why do you think we call him wacky and tacky? Now let's see what house the Lord is going to raise up in these last days. Look at the subheading, Amos the 9th chapter 11th verse. The subheading says the restoration of Israel. That's what it's all about. That, that's the nation that the Lord is raising up right now, the nation of Israel. And not just every Israelite. 
okay? He's looking for the elect of the nation of Israel. They're also known as the church of the firstborn. They're also known as the tabernacle of David. And when it says the tabernacle of David, this consists of David and all the individuals that were back there with David during his rulership, that were part of his cabinet, that were loyal to King David. Those same spirits are coming back. We, we know about reincarnation. We understand reincarnation, unlike the wacky tacky Christian. So you see how deluded they are? You see how lost they are? They have no idea what this Bible is really saying, man. So all praises to Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai has truly revealed, revealed to us what, what these scriptures are saying and who it pertains to. So this is Amos 9 11. In that day will I raise up the tabernacle of David that is fallen. This is what the Lord is doing even as I speak. All the spirits that were back there of David, part of his, his cabinet, his council, that were loyal to him, those same spirits are coming back in this knowledge, this truth. And, and they're taking their rightful positions. In that day will I raise up the tabernacle of David. We're in that day now. That is fallen and close up the breaches thereof. Those are the differences between the tribes. Because we know that sh uh, shortly after the rule of King Solomon, when King Solomon passed away, the nation of Israel was split in two. There was animosity between the tribe of Judah and the tribe of Ephraim. So they ended up splitting their ways. You know, Ephraim went into Assyrian captivity and later came over here to the Americas, Ephraim and the rest of the tribes. And the tribe of Judah, Benjamin and Levi, stayed back in Jerusalem. So there was this giant split, okay, and between the northern kingdom and the southern kingdom. All right, so that's what the Lord means by close up the breaches thereof. That's the differences between the tribes. And I will raise up his ruins, and I will build it as in the days of old. He's doing that right now. Okay, so the kingdom that's coming back really is the kingdom of David. Okay, and Yahweh Shai is going to be sitting on top of the kingdom of David. And then right underneath Yahweh Shai will be King David. It tells you that in a matter of fact. If we go in the book of Ezekiel, the 34th chapter, and we're going to go into the future now. It's a future prophecy. Ezekiel, bear with me for a minute. Ezekiel 34 is the part where it says David shall be their prince. Let's read it. Bear with me for a minute. It is right here. The book of Ezekiel 34 and 23. And I will set up one shepherd over them, and he shall feed them. And we know that King David, his, his occupation before he became king was what? A shepherd's boy. All right, he was the one that took care of the sheep. Okay, so I will set up one shepherd over them, and he shall feed them, even my servant David. He shall feed them and he shall be their shepherd. And that's going to happen in the kingdom. King David is going to take his rightful position in the kingdom. And this proves that uh, we never, you know, we never, when we die, we never just, we're never just totally destroyed when we die. We keep coming back over and over again. That's the point I'm making. We're always reincarnated in our different generations. So in the kingdom, King David is going to be reincarnated. He's going to sit back on the throne like he's supposed to, according to Bible prophecy. Remember, it is written, none dies to the Heavenly Father. All live to the Heavenly Father. The Heavenly Father is the Father of Spirits. And all, all whether they be alive or dead, they all live to Him. They all live to the Heavenly Father. Because they're nothing but spirits and bodies. And the Spirit cannot die. The Spirit is pure energy that comes from the Heavenly Father Himself. So if the Heavenly Father is alive, then the Spirit got to be alive, man. Come on, man. This is, this is not rocket science. This is clear to understand. And I, the Lord, will be their power and my servant David, a prince among them. See? I, the Lord, have spoken it. So that's why in the book of Amos 9 and 11, it speaks about this tabernacle of David that the Heavenly Father is going to raise up and build it as in the days of old. So all the elect men and the elect women of, of this nation, the nation of Israel, all the spirits that were part of David's council, all right, all the spirits that were loyal to King David, those are the spirits the Lord is dealing with, as in, i.e., the elect. 
okay and they're coming back to take their rightful position so once again this proves it's the heavenly father doing the choosing not you you woke up one morning and the sun was shining brightly and you decide to you decide to have jesus come into your heart you're just deluded you don't know you don't know what the hell's going on now let's read john 15 and 16. we're going to read it in it in its entirety john 15 and 16. well we start at 15. henceforth i call you not servants for the servant knoweth not what his lord doeth but i have called you friends for all things i have heard of my father i have made known unto you and that's how we shall speak it now here's the point you have not chosen me again someone should ask the wacky tacky christian concerning the disciples the apostles did they choose the lord or did the lord choose them how about moses right moses did he choose the heavenly father to serve the heavenly father or did the heavenly father choose him draw him out as it were and chose him and ordained him to be what he eventually became which is basically a prophet and shepherd and king of the nation of israel I'm talking about uh, moses okay and moses was a king it tells you that in the book of deuteronomy and he was all he also um uh, was chosen by the heavenly father to lead the heavenly father's people okay moses so the point is um he didn't choose the heavenly father the heavenly father chose him i'm talking about moses so someone should tell the wacky tacky christian that you don't do the choosing the heavenly father's the one doing the choosing so again john 15 16 you have not chosen me but i have chosen you and ordained you that you should go and bring forth fruit and that your fruit should remain. That's the other members of the elect, the other members of the house of David. That whatsoever you shall ask of my father in my name, he may give it you. And that's another thing too, the elect of the nation of Israel. They know the true name of the heavenly father. No doubt there. Okay. Bear with me for a minute. We want to take a look at what it says in the NLT version, John John 15 and 16, that's what we want. Yeah, here it is. So let's read it in the NLT. Let's see what it says. You didn't choose me. This is John 15, 16. You didn't choose me. I chose you. I appointed, I appointed you to go and produce lasting fruit, which is a metaphor for other members of the elect, other members of the house of David you know bring them into this knowledge you know wake them out of their comatose sleep okay so that the father will give you whatsoever you ask for using my name and that shows you how important the name of the heavenly father is and his only begotten son so there you go john 15 16 it's pretty explicit what, what's the title you cannot serve him unless he chooses you to serve him so John 15, 16 hits it on the head. These are the words of Yahweh Shai. And Yahweh Shai wouldn't lie. He hit, uh, John 15, 16 hits it on the, on the head. Hits the nail on the head. It, it is not us that do the choosing. It's the Heavenly Father that puts His Spirit on us to do, to, um, uh, it's the Heavenly Father that puts His Spirit on us to, to know and understand this knowledge is true. He's the one that does the choosing, not us. Okay, let me say that one more time. He, the Heavenly Father, is the one that does the chosen, or the choosing, not us. And the scripture to verify that is John 15, 16. You have not chosen me, but I have chosen you and ordained you. Uh, matter of fact, let's look at this word chosen. Let's see if maybe we can get another scripture. That one was pretty explicit, but maybe we can get... Well, this is a good one. Oh, wow. Look at that. Look at that. That one's, that one's powerful. This one right here. Uh, 1 Peter 2 and 4. Okay, let's read the uh, third verse. Let's read the second verse. 1 Peter 2 and 2. As newborn babes desire the sincere milk of the word that's the base the basics when you first come into this thing you learn the basics that ye may grow thereby right you grow into more and more understanding if so be ye have tasted the lord that is gracious what does that mean tasted the word tasted this knowledge is truth 
to whom coming unto a living stone, so we serve a living power, not a dead one, disallowed indeed of men, but chosen of the Heavenly Father and precious, chosen of the Heavenly Father. The Heavenly Father is the one that chooses us, man. You don't choose him, he's the one that chooses you. So you wacky tacky Christians, you got you got that thing backward, man. You got that you got that thing effed up, as they say. Alright, you just deluded. You don't know what you're talking about. I'm talking about you you allowed Jesus to come into your heart. First of all, his name is not even Jesus. So you hear not you just yeah, wacky tacky Christian. What can you say? The Lord is simply not dealing with them. The Lord have them wallowing in darkness, which is a sign that he ain't dealing with them. They're not part of the elect. The Lord's only looking for the elect. Matter of fact, I keep mentioning it. Here's the scripture for it. Romans 11 and 7. So if, if you run into somebody that claims to know the Heavenly Father, claims to know the Bible, and they're not talking about the elect, they don't know nothing, man. They don't know what the hell they're talking about. The Lord is only dealing with his elect. And his elect have been reincarnated reincarnated on this planet earth many times before romans 11 and 7 what then israel have not obtained that which he's seeking for that's the whole nation people what are they seeking for the truth and ultimately salvation when all hell breaks loose they're gonna want to be seeking for salvation but many of them will not find it the only ones that's going to find salvation is the elect matthew 24 and 30 and what a salvation it is man how is that going to scoop uh on the swoop down and scoop of his elect in, into something called the so-called UFOs, the chariots of the Lord. So how powerful is that, man? What then Israel have not obtained that which he seeketh for, but the election. And who, who chose the election? Did the election choose themselves? No. The Heavenly Father chose the election and gave them over to Yahweh Shai so that they could be sanctified. Okay? That's the deal. What then Israel have not obtained that which he seeketh for, but the election have obtained it, and the rest were blinded. See? So those that are blinded, the Heavenly Father didn't choose them. If he did, if he indeed chose them, they wouldn't be blinded. They would know what, what they would know the hundred percent truth. They would know what the hell's going on. Okay? So there you go, man. But the election have obtained it. I wonder what the NLT says. It says, so this is the situation. Most of the people of Israel have not found favor of the Heavenly Father. They are looking for so earnestly. And that, that's, that's true even to this very day. A few have the ones, oh man, the ones whom the Most High has chosen. Not you. You don't do the choosing. The Most High does the choosing. But the hearts of the rest were hardened. There you go. So it's the Heavenly Father essentially that does the choosing, not you. So you wacky tacky Christians, you need to stop it with this. I, I have accepted Jesus, Jesus into my heart and now I'm saved. You need to stop it, man. Really, you, 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 you need to stop it. Okay, you really do because you sound stupid. And that's why the Lord said his people are stupid. They're sottish children. Sottish means stupid and drunk. Because when a person is drunk, they tend to act stupid. They say stupid stuff. They do stupid stuff. There's a scripture I wanted to, wanted to get. Kind of eluded me right now. Hmm. Maybe it'll come back to me. But we're past the 20-minute mark. So pretty much that's, you know, I'm going to end it there, man. You cannot serve him unless he chooses you to serve him. And the main scripture for that was, was uh, the book of John the 15th chapter the 16th verse now at this point i'm going to allow you brothers you studious brothers to help me out on the comment board to put more scriptures proving the lord is the one doing the choosing and not us so that everybody could be edified those that the heavenly father have chosen to be part of his elect now that said it's on to the next one where it will be part number eight he is a separate entity from his only begotten son. All right, so we're going to have fun with that one. And that will be on the next video. So for now, I say shalom.